Can you really swap out your high-end gaming monitor for an OLED television? I did just that, and I can honestly tell you I won't be returning to my gaming monitor anytime soon. Let me explain. So I came from the Samsung Odyssey G9 Super Ultra Wide. It's a massive 49-inch G-Sync FreeSync 1000R curved monitor with HDR 1000 peak luminance. It's basically a dual QHD display with a resolution of 5120 by 1440 at a whopping 240 Hz. You might be asking yourself, why in the world would I ever want to swap out this monitor? But in actuality, this monitor came out with several issues, such as NVIDIA G-Sync not working correctly, or getting the monitor to actually work at 240 Hz was simply unattainable. Now these issues have been fixed with a firmware update from the manufacturer, but the monitor also suffers from hardware defects, such as poor wiring causing static electricity, which was the cause of the loud crackling sound I was experiencing. This monitor also suffers from heating issues, which might be the cause of some experiencing warping panels. Customers reported their panels actually began to separate from the screen. Now that's just crazy. Fast forward to November of last year, I was determined to get my hands on the next gen consoles. I was successful with the Series X, but wasn't able to get the PS5 until mid-December. After getting my hands on the next gen consoles, I quickly realized my cutting edge Samsung monitor with all the bells and whistles became outdated. It simply could not deliver the optimal experience I was yearning for with these new consoles. I could not get the HDR to work properly with the Series X. The 4K at 120 option basically did not exist due to the monitor outputting a 2K signal, which was fine, but I could not switch the monitor's FPS mode to 120 using an HDMI connection. And of course, the huge black bars on the left and the right side of the display was egregious. I soon later ordered the LG 48 inch OLED TV and never looked back. For the best distance, I mounted the TV on the wall. I'm sitting roughly two and a half feet and I don't feel any eye strain when I do productivity work. But when I game, I lean back a bit, sitting just about three to four feet away, which is ideal. Adjusting the display settings was a breeze. Simply connect the Series X HDMI cable to one of the four HDMI 2.1 ports and now I can obtain 4K visuals with a 120 FPS on certain titles. Playing Warzone at 120 FPS is just insane. With the addition of VRR, variable refresh rate, and ALLM, auto low latency mode, which this TV does support, is a game changer. I cannot explain to you how amazing this feels, but let me try. Think of a loud squeaky door that needs some force to close. Apply some WD-40 to the hinges, and now the door closes smooth without a sound. It's so smooth you have to be careful how much force you use to close the door, otherwise the door will slam hard. As a PC gamer, gaming at higher refresh rates have been the norm, but never on console with this level of fidelity. Warzone runs at a dynamic 4K at 120 FPS. I mean the price for performance is unmatched. The PS5 setup is simple as well. It's as easy as plug and play. I've been playing titles like Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ghost of Tsushima, and God of War. All titles running at a smooth 60 FPS. The visuals jump at you. The contrast from the brightest of the highlights to the darkest of blacks is one to one. OLED televisions are self-illuminating. The pixels turn on or off, giving you true black levels. But how does the TV perform with the Alienware Aurora R2 RTX 3080? Like a dream. It's almost too good to be true. Everything just works. From the HDR, NVIDIA G-Sync to running games at a 4K at 120 FPS. Yes, the RTX 3080 does have an HDMI 2.1 port, allowing 4K at 120Hz. Now getting 120FPS in newer titles are difficult and will require you to lower some of your settings. But playing older games, you'll be in for a real treat. Not only will you be able to hit 120 FPS at 4K, but with the inclusion of HDR and G-Sync, the visual fidelity on this OLED is just so darn gorgeous without a screen tear in sight. Another thing I notice 
it's a night and day difference with the quality of HDR TVs versus HDR monitors. HDR TVs are brighter and more vivid. The graphics do jump at you. As for the input lag, while in game mode there is virtually no perceivable lag. You're hitting between 13.6 milliseconds to 6.2 milliseconds, which is incredible for a television. Okay, but what about productivity? For those of you that are subscribed or have watched my previous videos know I am a graphic designer. Using this TV for work designing 8 hours a day took a while to get used to, simply due to the size of the display. You have to adjust the settings to your comfort. I found that working in a 2 grid workflow works best for me. I would have Photoshop on the left and Chrome open on the right and that seems to work great. I had to enlarge the font settings on both Photoshop and Chrome, but once you make those few tweaks, you are golden. At the end of the day, you'll need to make tweaks here and there, but after a few weeks on this TV, everything looks so darn good. My design pops more, giving me the desire to be more creative, overall be more productive. I used to do screen printing back in the day, and after using this monitor, I was inspired to get back into creating graphic t-shirts. As well, design a Concept Series X dashboard. I know some of you might have been wondering what Xbox user face I am using. Yeah, I actually created that. That's just me having fun. But all that aside, this TV does have its issues. The size. 48 inches is just a little too big. If there was a 32 inch, my god, that would be perfect. Second, the instant game mode. Don't get me wrong, it's a great feature, but if the TV is not in game mode, or if you're switching, let's say, from the PC input to the PS5 input, you'll get a black screen and a pop-up saying game mode. It can be a bit jarring, but eventually you'll get used to it. Finally, the automatic dimming. OLEDs do suffer from burnings or image retention, but it's highly unlikely unless you severely abuse the TV. Having a television on for hours or days with a static image or graphic will of course surely have the graphic burnt into the display. And I know the automatic dimming is a great feature, but while working, the monitor will automatically lower the brightness causing me to have to move the mouse or press a button on the remote to essentially wake it up. I don't know, it's a bit annoying, but it's a small issue that I can live with. This video is no way sponsored. I am a small channel and not even sure if you guys find my videos informative. But if you do, please show your support by liking this video and if you would like to see this channel grow, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for instant notification when I drop a new video. Your support is tremendously appreciated. My video to come will be my honest opinion of the Series X and the PS5. Which one has impressed me the most and why I feel you should purchase one over the other. But that's my time folks, I'm Chris Culture. See you in the next one. Peace.